this first question, is there an update on Jace Johnson? Obviously playing Purdue with a lot of big guys. Is he a key player? Yeah, uh, you know, Jace is still out. Um, he's getting better, uh, but he's still week to week in terms of our evaluation of, of him. And, and uh, you know, I, I do not expect him to play against Purdue. But you're right, we could sure use him. <laughs> what are the challenges when you face a, a huge guy like Harms? Well, there's a number of them. I mean, one, you know, defensively, he really makes it hard to score at the rim. I mean, in, in two games, he has eight block shots. Um, but he also can move his feet on the perimeter. So he, he's very good defender, you know, offensively. Um, he's just a big target in the block. And if you let him get deep post position, he's a handful down there. Did their home winning streak snap, Steve? Is that something you are concerned about as a coach, as a team kind of being salty after a loss? Uh, you know, we feel like we're going to get their best effort regardless if they just came after a win or a loss. And, and uh, they're an outstanding team. I have a great deal of respect for Purdue. Coach Painter does an incredible job. Uh, they're a typical Purdue team. Uh, they're hard-nosed, tough defensively. Uh, they run great motion offense uh, offensively. Uh, they don't beat themselves. And so, you know, this is quite the early season test. To have this type of test this early um, and really get a measuring stick for, for this group, what are you hoping to see from your group on Wednesday leading into, of course, Sunday's big game as well? Yeah, well, like you said, I mean, this is a huge test for us. I mean, we'll be challenged in every way from a system standpoint. I mean, defensively, uh, we're really going to have to be locked in, so we'll see where we're at on the defensive end. Offensively, uh, they make scoring hard. Uh, they turn people over. And so we'll see where we're at there. I mean, and this is one of the benefits of playing a game like this early because if you have a flaw or a weakness, it will be exposed. Those turnovers were an issue in the first game, 21 of them. What were you doing to correct those this week? You know, we went back to a lot of the fundamentals, uh, you know, just simple passing and catching a lot of the turnovers that. Uh, we had against Loyola were un unforced and lack of fundamentals. Uh, you know, Purdue, if you don't have fundamentally sound offensive basketball in terms of passing, catching, pivoting, uh, working to get open, uh, they're gonna they're gonna turn the, you over, and and their turnovers are gonna lead to points. Yeah, with Theo guarding Harms, uh, you know, fouls have been an issue for Theo in the past. What's he need to do to kind of avoid that against my seven foot three guy? Yeah, well, I think, you know, for Theo and Ed, I, they have to be intelligent in terms of uh, them defensively. I think post-defense, uh, it's not only on Theo to stop harms, but, uh, you know, we have to put great pressure on the ball, so the entry passes are more difficult. When it does get in there, we have to crowd the post, and then Theo's got to be very smart not to pick up any of those those cheap fouls. Those are the ones we can't afford if he's, if he's going to foul, and he will during the course of the game. Um, you know, it's it's got to be one that's earned. Yeah, Theo was really good in the, against Loyola. He has eight blocks, kept a lot of them in play. What do you what do you see the difference with him this year? Yeah, I just think he's a really good college basketball player. I think you know, and his confidence is growing. I mean, he's banged up a little bit as well. But uh, you know, for our win against Loyola, I thought if anybody you know stood out, certainly Marcus's scoring runs to start of the game. Uh, those things are always impressive, but over the course of 40 minutes, I'm not sure we had a, a player impact the game more than Theo did, especially on the defensive end. Maybe it's top secret, but how do you simulate seven foot three in practice? <laughs> you have Murata stand on two chairs. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you, you can't you can't simulate it, and you know that's one of the things. I mean, uh, we have a very good scout team. Uh, those kids, uh, you know, do a great job, um, but. You know, when when the rubber meets the road, seven foot three is going to be staring at you. Uh, you know, on Wednesday night. So, uh, and we just have to do our best to try to game plan and be prepared for what would we believe they'll throw at us based on what they've done to this point. Yeah. Over a week between the first game and this game, how did you kind of approach that? It's kind of a weird break. Yeah, it is a long time between games, and once you start playing games, you just you know, again for for a player. You want to keep playing. I mean, for us, uh, the first couple of days afterwards, we focused on you know what we need, what we did against Loyola, obviously what that meant, um, and how we could improve from that performance, and and then since then we focused the last few days on Purdue with a day off in between.
tough with scheduling games is nowadays. How nice is it for the Big East to be part of something like the Gavit game? It gives you an automatic big game right off the bat. Yeah, it's, I think it's great for our league. It's great for our conference teams. It's great for us. You know, early in the season, you know, you get to play a top-notch opponent, and then certainly we drew uh, a team in Purdue that's been at the top of, of their league, uh, you know, for the last four or five years. And as I said, it, it's going to present challenges for us where we'll get a realistic view of where we're at. So uh, there's there's good in that. Hopefully, there's a lot of good in that. Um, but there'll also be some things that that we know. Hey, against the top flight program, a team like this, this, this is where we got to get better. Drew and a couple guys come off the bench and contribute a lot to their last game against Texas. What do you think about the depth of this group team, and what's the challenge of that? Well, they do have very good depth and and, and very good players, and, and you know they're uh, they 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 come at you in waves. You know, defensively, they're just coming at you with with intense ball pressure. Uh, they back that up with. Uh, guys at the rim who can really protect the rim offensively. They, they can hurt you in a number of ways, not just in the paint with their with their big guys, but they have terrific perimeter shooting as well.